In this video, we will look into class constructors in Java. We'll start by defining what is a class constructor and what are their jobs. We'll look into the syntax of a class constructor. We'll see how Java initializes our instance variables using some default values if we did not provide initial values for our instance variables. And lastly, we'll see how we can have multiple constructors in our class or what we call overloading a constructor. So a constructor is basically the special method we call to instantiate or create a new object of a class. So when we use the new keyword to create an object, we follow that with the constructor, which basically has the same name as the class name followed by parentheses. Inside these parentheses, we could be passing some parameters or we could be using the default constructor, which does not um, accept any parameters. We can have multiple constructors for our class. Each one of them initializes our instance variables in a different way. So the job of the class constructor is just to initialize our instance variables when we create a new object of that class. So let's look at this example of a student class. I have the student class that has three instance variables, the name, which is a string, the age, which is an integer, and the GPA, which is a double. And notice each one of them is private, so I cannot have access to them directly. To be able to access them, I have a getter method that retrieves the instance variable value, and I have a setter method that will set this instance variable to a new value that I'm passing to that setter method. So for each one of these instance variables, I have a setter method and a getter method that will allow me to manipulate the values stored in them. So if I want to use this class and create an object of this class, in my main method here, I will need to create an object reference. So the class name, student, followed by an identifier, for example, stu1. And then I will instantiate the object using the new keyword. So new, followed by the constructor. So the constructor will have the same as the class names, the same name as the class name. And then I will have the parentheses, which are in this case empty. So what will that do? It will create an object of the class student. So in the memory, we are pointing to a memory location with stu1. And inside this memory location, I made a copy of the student class. What will that copy have? It will have all these instance variables, name, age, and GPA. Now, since I'm using the default constructor and I did not create a constructor in my class in here, Java will provide me with that constructor. And that will, constructor will basically just initialize the instance variables to their default values. So each one of these instance variables will be initialized to the default value of that data type. So for example, our integer default value in Java will be zero. Our double default value in Java will be 0.0. .0. So we initialize the age to zero, we initialize the GPA to 0.0. .0. For the name, since it's an object of the class string, it will be initialized to null. So if I try to access, for example, the age, let me try to print the age, system.out.print line, and I want to get the age, so stu1.getAge, you'll notice it will go, it's going to print out zero, which is the initial value for the age. Now, in most cases, I do not want to use the default constructor that is provided by Java, and I will need to create my own constructors in my class to be able to set these default values or even accept the initial values from whoever is creating the object. So to create a, a constructor in my class, I will follow this syntax. I will set my access modifier to public so anyone can access it from outside this class. The constructor will have the same name as the class name, including the uppercase. If we created the class name with an uppercase, it will have the uppercase at the beginning. And then in parentheses, I could have a parameter list, or I can leave it empty if I want to have it as the default constructor. I will have my curly braces, and inside them, I will be having the constructor body, which is initializing the instance variables values. Now, it's really important to remember we cannot have a retain value here. There is no retain values. So we cannot even have a void. So although it looks like a method, it's a special kind of method that does not have a return value, not even um, a void. Now, if you do not have a parameter list in here, we call it a default constructor. So a constructor that has empty parentheses, this will be called our default constructor. 
So let's go back to our student class in here. I want to provide my own version of the default constructor. I do not want to use the one that is provided by Java. I want to provide my own initial values for my in instance variables. So I will create my default constructor. Again, it has to be public, so it's accessible from outside the class. It does not have a return type. It will have the same name as the class name, which is student. And we are starting the S with an uppercase. And we'll have the empty um, parentheses because this is my default constructor. Inside it, I will set the initial values for my variables. So instead of assigning the name null, the age 0, and the GPA 0, 0.0, I'll assign them some values that I have um, in my program. So for example, I can set the name to be equal to no name instead of null. I can set the age to be, for example, 16 instead of 0. And I can set the GPA to be equal to 3.5 instead of 0.0. So now if I go back to my main class with the same code that I had before, you will see that the age should be printing now the value that I provided, which was 16. So now when we created an object of the student class using the default constructor, Java checked. It found that we have a default constructor, so it executed the um, statements we have in here. If we did not provide the default constructor, Java will go to the um, default version of the constructor, which is provided by Java, which will initialize our instance variables to the default values of their data types. Again, it's really important to remember that we do not specify a return value for the constructor, not even a void. It's only public, followed by the class name, followed by the parentheses. If you provide a return value, you will get a compiler error when, when you are trying to create an object using the um, constructor. So if we did not provide um, default values in our constructor for or initial values for our cons um, instance variables in the constructor, each data type will get the initial value, which is the default value for that data type in Java. So byte, short, integer, and long will get the value 0. Float and double will get 0, 0.0. Um, the car will get the null character, which is the Unicode value of 0, 0, 0, 0. Boolean will get the um, default value of false. And any object reference, for example, strings or objects of other classes, will get the default value null. So if your constructor does not provide values to the instance variables, they will receive these default values um, depending on their data type. So going back here to our example, we are creating a student object called stu1 or referenced by the um, object reference stu1. And we are using the default constructor, which assigns the, these default values for that object. Now, if I want to change values in that student, I can use the setter method. So stu1.setAge, for example, and I want to give them the age of 18. I want to set their um, stu1.set name, for example. I want to set their name to Mike. And I want to set their GPA to 4.0. Set GPA to 4.0. Now, if I already knew these values, instead of using these three setter methods or three calls for the setter methods, if I already know these values before I created the object, it would make more sense to actually assign these values when I create the object. And that's where we can create more constructors. So instead of having only one constructor that assigns default values, we can have other constructors that we can pass initial values to the object when we create it. So when we create the object, we want to set the age to be 18, the name to be Mike, and the GPA to be 4.0. So when we create the object, we want to set these values instead of creating or calling these setter methods. And that's where we will be creating more constructors in our class. Now, since my constructors need to have the same name as the class name, we will be utilizing a concept called overloading or method overloading. Method overloading allows you to reuse the method name in the same class. So if you have two or more methods in the same class that have the same method name, to be able to differentiate between them, Java will look at the method signature, which is basically includes the method name and the parameter list. So if they have the same method name, they should have a different parameter list, which includes different types in your parameters or different number of parameters or even different ordering of your parameters. So if you have more than one method with the same name, the parameter list has to be different. 
Going back to our student class, we have one constructor, which is the default constructor that takes no parameters and it will set the instance variables to these initial values. Now I can override that constructor and I can provide another constructor that takes more than zero parameters. So the constructor has to have the same class name. And if I leave my parentheses empty, you will see I have a red underline here under both of them. It will tell me that, that we have a duplicate method. They have the same name and they have the same parameter list, which is empty parameter list. So what I can do here, I can provide a parameter list that is different from this constructor. So this constructor, I'm going to use it to create an object where I provide initial values for my instance variables. So this constructor will take a string that represents the new name, for example. It will take an integer that represents the new age. And it will take a double value that represents the um, new GPA. And these values, I'll assign them to my instance variables. So my name will be equal to the new name that I provided to that method or to that constructor. My age, my instance variable age, will be getting the new age that we passed when we used that constructor. The GPA will be getting the new GPA that we passed to that constructor. So now when I create an object of the student class, I have two options. I can use my default constructor, which will set the initial values to that we have in the initial um, values here in the constructor. So name, no name, age 16, and GPA 3.5. Or I can use the other constructor, which takes these three values and sets the instance variables to these values we sent. So I'm going to delete this part. And then I'm going to create a new student. So student stu2. And for this student, I'm going to use the other constructor. So student that takes three parameters. Now, when you are calling this constructor, you have to pass the parameters in the same order. So you have to send a string followed by an integer followed by a double. So I'm sending the string, the name. Let's say we are sending Sam. And then the age is 19. And the GPA is 2.5. So now we have two objects. One is being created by using the default constructor. And one is being created using the constructor that takes three parameters. String followed by an integer followed by a double. So if I went now and printed out system dot out dot print line and we are printing stu1 dot get name and then we do the same thing for stu2 which is our second object you will see that they have different names based on the constructor we used to create that object so stu1 should have the default name which is no name and stu2, we set the name to be Sam, so that's what we will be getting when we get the name. So the first student has no name, and the second student has the name um, Sam. Now, sometimes I do not know all the instance variables values when I'm creating the object. So a student comes to register, they only provided me with their name. So I should be able to create an object of that student class using only the name. So I want to initialize the name with this value, but I do not know the age or the GPA. So in that case, I can provide a constructor in my student class that only accepts the name. So I can provide another version of my constructor. So public it has to have the same name as the class name, so student. And then this constructor will only take a string. And this string will represent the new name. So in my constructor here, I will just assign the name, the instance variable name, to be equal to the new name that I pass to that um, to that constructor. So now I can create another student, for example, student3. So student stu3. And then I'm creating a new object using the constructor that accepts one string on value. And let's call him Mike. So now I have three objects. One was created using the default constructor. One was created by the constructor that takes a string followed by an integer followed by a double. And then one using the constructor that only takes 
a string. So if I wanted to print their name, I can copy this. And then I will go print out stu1 or stu3.getName. So now the first student, using the default constructor, they will get the value no name for the name. The second one got Sam. The third one got Mike. Now, since I did not provide values for my other instance variables, they will get the default values um, for the data type. So the age will be getting zero and the GPA is getting 0.0, .0 because we did not set the values for the age or the GPA. So what I can do, I can just set the age to whatever default value I want. So for example, I can set it to 16 and I can set the GPA to be 3.5. So in this case, I'm setting the values for the age to be 16 and I'm setting the GPA to be 3.5. And in this case, we are not getting the initial values that are provided by Java. I'm getting the initial values that I want to be assigned um, to my students when they first sign up in my college. 